Hi, and welcome back to my shop. Well, it's not really my shop, is it? We're, we're actually in my backyard, um, and I'm sitting in my entry for the King's Fine Woodworking Adirondack Chair Build-Off. This is my entry. I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm really excited to share it with you. There does come a point in every maker's life, DIY or otherwise, when you say to yourself, I'm spending so much money. You can make money woodworking, and Adirondack chairs are a great place to start. One of the beauties of Adirondack chairs is that you're able to build the chair from all different types of material, be it dimensional lumber that you buy at the big box store, or you could go exotic hardwood like I did. I'm an admin and a mod for King's Fine Woodworking on Facebook. James had a video titled, How to Make Money Woodworking, and he highlighted this chair. And what you're about to see is my process video for building this Adirondack chair and entering it into the build-off. Make no mistakes about it. This is a DIY level project. However, it is also what I would call an intermediate DIY project. There's a lot of things that went wrong on this project. In this video, you're gonna see what worked for me. I'll do a follow-up video later showing all the mistakes that went wrong because believe me, there were a lot of mistakes. But in the end, I'm really happy with this build. Uh, it's made out of solid white oak. I used purple heart and ebony for plugs. Um, it's a, we'll call it fan favorite for my Baltimore Ravens. So how can you get involved other than building your own chair? Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Then go to the description below. Find Ryan's build, find James's build. Make sure you sub and like and comment on their videos as well. If you like, subscribe, and comment on all three builds, you're gonna go into a random drawing. And in that random drawing, you're gonna get prizes. The grand prize is a set of Baltic birch ply templates and plans for building this chair from James King at King's Fine Woodworking, a push stick made by Ryan Gratlin of RPG Woodworking and Design, and a mug, just like this, made on my lathe. It might not actually be this one. Um, this is my blue ocean throwback mug, uh, but a mug just like this sent to you uh, for getting involved. Second place is gonna get a set of paper templates and a set of plans, and Ryan and I will probably throw in a sticker or something like that. And third place, you're gonna get just a set of plans. Oh, and you're gonna have to vote. Vote for which chair you like best. Do you like my chair or do you like Ryan's? Do you like my chair or do you like Ryan's? I'm thrilled that you're here. Thank you for coming back to my channel. And if you're new, I really do hope you choose to like and subscribe the channel. Yeah, let's get to, well, let's get to me showing you how I built this chair. got all the templates made that I need to make at this point, except for the back slats. I've got them right here. One of the things that's been pretty interesting about these plans that James put together was that he said that you can make it out of either dimensional lumber or hardwood. And if you do stuff in hardwood, you're adding an exceptional amount of weight. Forget cost. Cost is one thing, but an exceptional amount of weight to the project. So I've decided, per his plans, to say that I can do these three quarters of an inch thick. That creates some interesting problems. Number one, I have to actually change the template, which I'm in the process of doing. Um, the other thing is, trying to figure out, bring the camera down here, <coughs> trying to figure out how to handle whether or not I'm gonna use the face side here or the face side here when I do my cut. It doesn't necessarily really matter how I'm gonna do it, except for I only have so much wood and it's purple heart and it's expensive. So I've spent the better part of the morning, probably a good two hours at this point, messing around with the template. At the end of the day, 
this is equivalent to the eighth day of my life where there was a moil involved and one cut could really screw everything up. did here we'll call this kind of like a pro tip um, if you're working in a shop by yourself if you get to a point where you actually have to clamp things like I did with this which is an oblong angle it's 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 a shaped piece with a six degree cut on it going into a flat spot on a board it's challenging so so one of the things I did after mocking up the first one which I struggled with an awful lot because I took some wood glue. You can use any wood glue. The wood glue isn't as much about strength and structure at this point. 
by taking a long clamp with the glue, just enough on there to get a little bit of squeeze out. Get everything set up. It doesn't need to be full on. It's not there. It's not there to be structural. But one to two minutes is enough for a tight bond style wood glue to actually tack up. I just grabbed a cup of coffee. I gave it five minutes. I've allowed it to tack up. That may just give me enough adhesion so that when I go to drill, pre-drill for my screws, that I'm not going to get that wonky and that movement that goes along that just drives us crazy, which is why it took me 15 minutes to do the other side. This is a time saver. It's basically I'm creating a liquid clamp to assist me. You are on end grain, so remember, it's going to get a little soaked in even though it's, um, it's sealed. Just a little tip um, from mistakes I've made and things I'm learning while we do this build. doing here um, this is a, this is a reasonably complicated build for one person um, I'm using my router table to hold the slats up after starting on my assembly table and that just wasn't working one of the things that I did decide to do was to actually measure things out to get the center points and then I can just fill in the holes by placing the clamps though on the right and the left it keeps me from shifting left to right it's gonna make it easier for me when I do the initial pilot hole drill then, once I start with the initial pile hole drill and I break through to the, um, into the white oak, what I'm doing is I'm taking the slat off, finishing that based on the channel that I started to create, then drilling the rest of the countersunk portion of it on my table and install. It's in a complete round robin way around the barn of doing this, and I found that this works really, really well. Um, it's not time efficient, but it's keeping me from going nuts and dropping stuff all the time, which has happened quite a bit on this build.
Wait a minute. You're probably wondering why I'm taking this off, huh? Well, this is kind of like my Steve Jobs moment. As I'm putting the back slats on and I'm gonna put the, uh, the bottom slats on, I have something special put on. Just, and it, and it actually came, I guess I forgot to put that screw in. It actually came from you, from King's Fine Woodworking, from one of our members from the community. So um, we're gonna add something a little special to the front brace. Let's do it. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I hope you learned something. I hope you took something away from it. Uh, make sure that you vote for which chair you like better. Make sure you check out Ryan's channel. Make sure you check out James's channel. Check his video out. Make sure you subscribe to both of them. Comment on all three of our videos so you can be in the drawing to win free giveaways. And make sure you check out MK Designs, Michael Long's channel. Huge, huge, huge mentoring supporter of my build and I can't thank him enough. And while you're here, you can check out these other videos I've done in the past. Either way, I hope you're in your shop making amazingly beautiful things, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.